Is there any information preserved in the orbital characteristics of, let's say we find it, okay, say we find a Mars-sized object out there and we're able to constrain down its orbit, is there any information preserved there that would tell us the difference of whether it was a capture or if it was something that migrated from the inner solar system? Yeah, so I think the uh, key there is going to be the inclination of the planet, because if you migrate from the inner solar system, you would expect a fairly low inclination and if you're captured there's no preference for an inclination of zero and so the inclination is more random so i would say you know if you find something that's has an inclination of five degrees or ten degrees it's probably not captured but if you find something at 60 degrees or 120 degrees you know that's you know very hard to produce via scattering now, I want to be clear here, because this is a possibility, almost out of science fiction, the idea of capturing an alien world from another star system entirely, and that we could go out there and study it, which would be probably be the most interesting object in the, <laughs> in the solar system if, we, if it were of interstellar origin of some type. Now, the question is, is what mechanisms of capture can happen here? In other words, we're talking about something getting captured from the birth cluster, but also the sun and other stars pass very close to each other in the past, like Schultz's star and things like that. So is that a possible way that we could have captured a world as well, just by passing by a random star system? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's possible to actually have stars steal planets from wide orbits that are around other stars. It's also possible, you know, if we just look at the capture of free-floating planets, there are many possible routes to do so. As I was discussing the, the birth cluster, probably the most well-studied mechanism of capture is three-body interaction. You know, the stars are very close together, and so you have a star, another star, and the planet. So you could think of it as a restricted three-body interaction, and the configuration is just right in terms of position and velocity that the planet loses enough energy to become bound to the star. You can also have capture as a result of a birth cluster expanding because the total system is, is, is relaxing. You can also have capture with planets, right? So if it was a really low mass planet and it happened to come close to Jupiter or another gas giant, that's another mechanism for capture. So, so the, there, there are a lot of different ways. But I think the bottom line here is that n-body simulations, would, which capture all sorts of ways, at least for free-floating planets, not for st stealing uh, a planet from a wide orbit. Those simulations were also done, but this this looks, you know, this this was the the focus of my paper. That with current statistics, it seems like there may very well be a planet out there, and and so that's why. So so there's. Then the question of why is this exciting? There's two levels to it, I think. One is that, well, in a way, there are three levels. One is that you know there could be a ninth planet in the solar system, and that you know that rewrites children's placemats. I mean, it it, it speaks to our understanding of ourselves in the context of space and the universe, in terms of understanding our home planetary system. And, you know, that's why people care deeply about Pluto. I mean, people are still talking about, you know, this classification in 2006 because people care about the solar system and the planets are deeply, we have personal connections to the planets. And so, so that's one as aspect of it. But a second aspect is that, unlike a lot of other proposals, this would be, as you mentioned, a captured exoplanet. So the nearest exoplanet is Proxima b, which, you know, Breakthrough Starshot has spent $100 million trying to figure out how to visit. But this one would be a thousand times closer and it would be bound to the sun. So in terms of trying to learn about the habitability of the galaxy writ large and understanding the habitability of the solar system in the context of the galaxy and the universe, I mean, studying a terrestrial exoplanet in our backyard would be a massive dream come true for science. And it gets us closer to figuring out the question of, of are we alone? And then thirdly, I think there's a sort of philosophical aspect to, to it as well. 
because this result was just a simple combination of work that had been done before that led to a, an extremely striking idea and a really thought-provoking outcome. And I and I think it speaks to the idea that questioning and you know just questioning one's surroundings, using the tools of of logic and and reason is one of the most powerful ways to effect change in whatever field that you're in, whether you're in science, you're in the arts, you are in public policy, right? Just using what you know about the world and using logic and putting things together in unconventional ways can actually lead to really exciting discoveries about the world and about ourselves.